Welcome to Where He Leads Me with Mike and Laura Harris. Where He Leads Me will help to bring understanding of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Join Mike and Laura as they discuss biblical truths to help people walk in their God-given purpose and calling. Welcome back to Where He Leads Me. I'm Mike Harris. And I'm Laura Harris. We are happy to be with you today. And Laura, today we're going to be talking about miracles. We are, Mike. It's going to be a fun program because we are just going to bounce back through our memories and just tell about certain miracles that we have seen and witnessed, experienced over the years and i'm excited actually to reveal some of these things all together in one program and just begin to share uh, the miracles that we have seen the power of god in action well laura i remember when i was on a mission trip in uganda africa and we were teaching the pastors in the middle of the day and the people of the church and there was a gentleman there from uganda who struggled to get out of a chair people helping him get up. And as I watched this, I could see clearly that he had a bad back. And in fact, our friend from Uganda told us later that that prior Sunday, this man was laying on mats at the church. So when we went that night for the revival meeting, I was so surprised to see this man get up and start giving the testimony of how Jesus had healed him And he was kicking his legs like you can't even imagine. And in fact, I had him come back the next night to share his testimony again. And I took a video of it because I just wanted that memory of this person that I saw. This man whose back was so bad went to the back. There was a prayer he was led in of forgiveness to forgive people he may have unforgiveness against. Then there was a prayer for his healing. And he was radically healed and transformed. And when you get to witness that and experience that and see with your own eyes this man who clearly had a very terrible back and then see him that night and the next day get up sharing his glory to God and to Jesus for his healing and kicking his legs like, Laura, I couldn't even kick him myself. I couldn't do what he was doing. So it was just amazing to witness that. Well, Mike, that is a great testimony. I love that testimony. And, you know, we have seen the Lord do a lot of different things over the course of time. It's really been very encouraging to watch. You know, I remember we see the multiplication in Scripture of feeding the 5,000 with a few loaves and fish. But I had a similar experience, not to that extent. But we have a friend from Uganda who is visiting over here in the States And you were a pastor of our church at that time. And so I took him to church that day. And through the circumstances that I won't go into, I know that I had two $100 bills folded sideways stuck in my wallet. I had gotten them on a Saturday, and I'm good with numbers, and I keep up with the money I have in my pocket, whether it's $3 or $200 or $300, whatever it might be. And so when I was in the church service with our friend, the Lord started telling me to give him the $200. And I thought, Lord, I'll give him $100 because I was planning on going to the grocery after church for us and our children at that time. Our children were younger. And I just remember having this struggle, this mental tug of war about Give him 200. No, I'm going to give him 100. Give him 200. So that went on, and we had a church meal after the service that day, and we were downstairs in the basement, and I had to go out to get something out of the car. I finally just relented and surrendered to what I was hearing from the Lord, and I was like, I'm going to give him the $200. And Laura, when I opened my wallet and pulled out those bills that were folded sideways, There were three $100 bills there, and I know that I know that I only had two $100 bills. Now, some people may hear that and think that I just was mistaken, whatever you might want to think. But my Bible says that God spoke the worlds into existence. 
And if he spoke everything that we see into existence, it's no problem for him to put another $100 bill in my wallet. And I know I came in and saw you and our friend, and I was just a little bit dazed at that point because I knew that I knew that the Lord had shown me a miracle. Amen. Well, Mike, that is a great testimony. I love that testimony. And, you know, we have seen the Lord do a lot of different things with money and finances. Well, Laura, I remember you were a pastor of a small church for a little while, and we would have a healing service on one Sunday night a month, and we did that for a little while, and we really never saw anyone healed. But for some reason, later after that, we decided to have a healing service at a local fairgrounds. But I'll never forget, from the very first time we met at the fairgrounds, you said, I believe we're going to see healings at this event. At this healing meeting. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, most all the other people there were shaking their head yes as we were kind of rolling our eyes because we had not seen any healings. Well, that's right, Mike. And we did pray and we sought the Lord and we believed. I believed. I kept saying that we're going to see healing and we held on to that. And the first night or two, we saw so many healings that were just amazing miracles of God. And one of the most dramatic healing miracles that I saw was this man and he lives in our county so he is still around I'm not going to give his name but he had fallen off of some scaffolding and had just broken his feet and ankles all to pieces and I think the prognosis was that he would never walk again he did heal up enough to be able to walk but he was in such pain all the time But we didn't know that at this meeting. You found this out after the fact. That's exactly right, Mike. I did not know that he was in pain. Anyway, he came up at the end of the first night. All he said was, my feet hurt. Will you pray for my feet? And so it was about 11 or 1130 at night. It was long. A lot of people had come up for prayer that night. We had a bench across the front. He sat on the bench, and I knelt down, and I put my hands over the top of his boots, and I just said, Dear Lord, heal his feet. Amen. It might have been a little more than that, but it was very minimal prayer. It wasn't a big, long, flowy prayer, but it's something very simple, like, Dear Lord, heal his feet. Amen. So the next night, he came back, and he said, I just have to testify what the Lord did. And I said, Well, tell me what the Lord did. And he then told me that he had fallen off of the scaffolding, how much pain he had been in. And he said that he had never slept through the night for five years and that he had never been without pain in five years. And he said, I slept through the night for the first time and I am completely pain free. And I run into this man from time to time. It seems like I run into him at the gas station while we're both pumping gas. And I'll say, how are your feet? He said, I tell everywhere I go what Jesus did for me. Well, that's awesome, Laura. Well, Laura, one of the more amazing miracles that I know that you've experienced is when you've heard the voice of the Lord in English when people were speaking in another language. Well, Mike, that has actually happened to me three different times where I have heard English when people were confirmed to have been talking in a different language. And we see that in Acts chapter 2 when people heard in their own native language. The first time that it happened, I was on the Isle of Patmos. I was in the cave of the Revelation where the Apostle John received the words of the book of Revelation. And there was a Greek Orthodox priest there and he spoke to me and I understood exactly what he said. I responded to what he said. And then later, my friend that was with me went up to take communion. And he told her, you're not Greek Orthodox. This is not for you. And she still stood there waiting for him to serve her communion. And he said again, you're not Greek Orthodox. This is not for you. And so I thought, you need to move on. He's not going to serve you. So as we were leaving the cave that day, she said, I don't know why he would not serve me communion. And I said, well, he told you why. And she said, no, he didn't. And I said, 
He said, you're not Greek Orthodox. This is not for you. She looked at me. She said, I didn't hear that. I was already tuned in. I knew what was happening. And I said, did you hear anything in English all day? And she said, no, I didn't. I said, did you hear him address me? She said, I knew he looked at you and roared and said something, but I did not hear anything in English. And so we went back to the cave like that afternoon. It was after lunch. And so I approached the priest and I said, do you speak English? No English, no English. And so later, my friend, who was a minister in an adjoining country, went back to the cave of the Revelation on the Isle of Patmos. And when the priest found out she was a minister in a Middle Eastern country, he invited her to coffee along with several others. He communicated with her through an interpreter. And she said, why will you not serve me communion? And he said, you are not Greek Orthodox. It's not for you. Now, I think they worked it out where she could take communion later on. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is because there was a witness that heard him in Greek and I heard him in English, it was confirmed. And then the priest also gave her the same explanation for why he would not serve her communion that I had heard in English. But the same thing happened in Uganda When I was ministering to pastors there, we were doing pastor training, and I was doing it through an interpreter. At one point, two brothers were with us. One was talking to the congregation in their native language, and the other brother was interpreting for me. I laughed, and I said, you just spoke English. And he said, yes, I know. And I said, well, he spoke English. He said, no, he didn't. I said, yes, he did. And so I was hearing like, mirror images of what they were saying. One would say it in Luganda, which was the native language. The other one would say it in English, but I was hearing both in English. And so it was just another example of hearing language in my native language, which happened in scripture that was spoken in another language. But the final one was most interesting. And that was a time where we were ministering out in Uganda in a very remote village. And so there was a girl out in that village, and she started a demonic manifestation. And if people have ministered in Africa, they know what it is. But a lot of people in the United States don't know what that is. But anyway, it was very wild, erratic behavior. In fact, she had two pastors, one on each side, holding her. And while this demon was manifesting, I was talking to her and she said, yes, yes, I know who you are. And she said it in English. And I said, well, I know who you are. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you will turn this girl loose. Anyway, the next day I asked the pastors who were there, I said, does this girl speak English? And they said, no. And I said, did you hear her speak to me? in English. And they said, yes. And it wasn't the girl. It was the demon. Nevertheless, she did not know that language. Well, Laura, that's amazing, those testimonies. And I've lived through them with you. And I've seen these. I was there in Uganda with you when this young lady was manifesting a demonic entity. But for those who may question that these things can happen today, I'll just say that the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All of these things happen in Scripture, and our God, our Jesus, is unlimited in what He can do. He can do it all. And so we see in Acts, as Laura said, that they heard in their own native language when people were speaking in a different language. We don't know completely why the Lord gave Laura those experiences, but they did, in fact, happen, and it's been a blessing to us. Yes, and it comes down sometimes to listening to the Lord and doing what He says, and I thought I would share another testimony of stopping at a particular gas station one morning. 
One morning I was going to church, as you mentioned just a minute ago. I was pastoring a church over in a different county, and I always stopped at a particular gas station to buy coffee on the way to church. I always went early uh, so I could get there and get settled and pray and just spend some quiet time with the Lord before people started coming. And so one morning I was driving, and the Lord said, stop at the marathon station. I thought, Lord, that's not where I get my coffee. And honestly, it wasn't a very nice gas station anyway. I really didn't want to stop there. But the Lord was just insistent going down the road that I stop at this one gas station. And so I did. I stopped and I went in and I knew the Lord wanted me to encounter someone. And so I went in and I walked through the store and there were some men sitting around drinking coffee. And I kind of looked around a little bit and I thought, the person is not here. I just knew in my spirit that the person was not there. So I started walking toward the door. And about the time I got to the door, it was a double door. And I was about to go out one door in the other door came a gentleman and he looked like he was having a rough time of it. I'll just say that. And I noticed that right off the bat. And then the Lord spoke to me and he said, that's him. Tell him I love him. By that time, I was already out of the door. He was already in the store. So I thought, well, Lord, I'm just going to wait for him out here and wait for him to come out, and then I'll tell him. I waited about 10 minutes, hoping he wasn't going to sit down and drink coffee with the other men in the store. But he did come out after about 10 minutes, and when he did, I approached him, and I told him the story. I said, I don't stop here. And I said, the Lord had me to stop here, and he has a message for you. The Lord wanted me to tell you that he loves you. And he started tearing up and he said, I just don't know what to say. He had been having a very rough time in his life. His marriage was falling apart and there were some other things that were going on in his life. Anyway, he confided that his plan was to go home and commit suicide. Anyway, the Lord knew that. And the Lord took me off my agenda, put me on the Lord's agenda. And anyway, the Lord really blessed me and blessed the man. And the man stayed in contact with me for a long time after that. He would call and we would talk. And the last time I talked to him, he was doing well. Well, and it's just a blessing what the Lord can do with any of us if we hear what he tells us to do and we obey it. And I know, Laura, the Lord has told you that He's trying to teach us, and this is for our listeners as well, to obey every little thing that he tells us to do, even if it doesn't make sense or it seems silly. Because we can't see the big picture like Jesus can. We don't know the end from the beginning. We don't know why he's having us do things, but we just work on being obedient. Mike, I just want to share a testimony, a miracle testimony that was for the benefit of another person, and he never even knew that I prayed for him. But I was in a hotel room one night, and I was by myself, and there was an adjoining door between the hotel rooms, and there was a man in the next room over, and he was coughing and coughing and coughing and coughing. He was just coughing almost nonstop. For quite a while, I thought, Lord, I am never going to be able to sleep with this man coughing like this. It sounds like I was probably more concerned about my sleep than about this man. But anyway, I prayed for the man. And so instantly the coughing stopped. Wow. Instantly it stopped. So he never coughed again for the entire night. And so I was telling you about that testimony the next day. Yes, I remember you calling me the next morning and telling me about this testimony and about how you didn't hear any more coughing. And I said, you don't think he died, do you? And you laughed and said, no, he hasn't died. No, I heard him moving around the room. So I knew that he was in there. He was fine. He was moving around. But there was just not another cough for the entire night. I never heard him cough again until I checked out, other than to say the Lord heard the prayer. I believe he responded. The man was delivered of whatever was attacking him, and it was a great testimony because it was an instantaneous answer to a prayer, and those things really, really built our faith. And the man had no idea 
that never. you had prayed for him. No, I never saw him. I never communicated with him in any way. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, Laura, you had an experience with a man in need, so why don't you tell the listeners about that? I was actually on a trip, and I had stopped to buy gas, and as I was in the convenience store, they had some blankets rolled up on the shelf, and actually, I was going a different direction, but to get out of the traffic, I had to go around, and I saw those blankets on the shelf. I felt like the Lord wanted me to buy one of those blankets. So I bought the blanket and I just put it in my car and I just believed the Lord was going to tell me what to do with that blanket. Well, three or four days later, I was still on this trip and the Lord had me to get off at a certain exit as I was driving down the interstate. And when I got off of the exit, there was a man standing at the end of the exit ramp and he was a homeless man. He had a sign. He looked like he was in serious need and so anyway the lord said give him the blanket and i thought lord you want me to give him the blanket and he said give him the blanket so i reached over grabbed the blanket and i rolled the window down and i said hey buddy i said uh, would you like to have a blanket and he said yes he said i had a blanket but somebody stole my blanket and he said i am so thankful he said thank god for the blanket <laughs> that's amazing laura and you know the Lord knew that that man had a need, and that blanket was provided through the direction of the Lord. Amen. Well, Laura, I think I've shared this on another program, and I'm not going to go into any detail except to say that the Lord saved me from malaria that I got while I was in Uganda on a mission trip. But for a divine appointment I had on an airplane, I know that I wouldn't be here right now because I later found out that I had the worst kind of malaria you can get most likely to kill you that multiplies three times faster than other malarias. And I received a message from a doctor on a plane that literally saved my life. And I knew it was a divine appointment. I told you and others about it when we got back from Uganda about this divine appointment, this divine warning I had on the plane. And that literally saved my life. So I thank the Lord for that. Well, Mike, it's so important that we give God the praise, honor, and glory for every situation that we've been in. And we did do a program on that testimony, and it is available on whereheleadsme.org. I think it's actually program number two. It's very, very early in our recording of programs, and we're actually up well over 200 now. So, But it is available at whereheleadsme.org. You know, Laura, as we're talking about these miracles and giving these testimonies, you know, that is so important because it tells us in Revelation 12, verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. That means we're willing to even sacrifice our lives in doing what Jesus calls us to do. And Laura, I would just say That is such an important thing. And these testimonies that we're giving are all for the glory and honor of Lord Jesus. So, Laura, why don't you share one other testimony before we close this program out? Well, Mike, I was just thinking about one more testimony that I might share. One day I was driving on one of the interstate highways in our state, and I heard the Lord say, Exit 112. And I looked up, and there was an exit sign in the distance, but it was too far away, and I could not read the exit number. So I thought, well, if that's exit 112, I'm getting off the exit. And so when I got there, sure enough, it was exit 112. So I took the exit, and I didn't get the next assignment until I actually got on the exit ramp. I could have blown right on by that and thought, oh, there's exit 112. I would have never heard the next part. But as I was on the exit ramp, I heard the Lord say, go to the hospital, go to the ER, look for a woman in a purple shirt. So I drove to the hospital and actually the hospital was 17 miles off of the exit. And each time I kept thinking, Lord, am I going right? This seems like a long way. I would see a blue hospital sign. And so I just kept going. I got to this hospital, and then I asked, 
someone in the parking lot. I said, are there any other hospitals nearby? And they said, no, this is the only one. So I went into the ER and what did I find but a woman in a purple shirt? There were six people in the ER and one of them had on a purple shirt. And so I ducked into the restroom and I thought, okay, Lord, what do I do now? And so anyway, I came out and she was gone. It's like, oh no, I missed it. (laughs) But she had been actually sitting with a man and they had taken her back to get vital signs and whatnot while she was there in the ER. I went and told the man who was with her what had happened. I said, the Lord took me off of the interstate, drove me over here, told me to come to the ER and look for a woman in a purple shirt. I said, can you get me back there? And he said, yes, I'll get you back there. So we went up and talked to the lady at the desk and she said, well, she'll be back out in just a minute. Just wait for her. So she came out and we found a private place and I told her the story. I said, the Lord had me come here to look for someone in a purple shirt. So I said, what do you need? And she said, I just got out of jail. I can't find a job. My grandmother just died and I'm having a kidney stone attack. So anyway, I prayed for her. I felt the power of God. I knew the Lord healed her. I don't know what all he did for her. I just prayed for her very simply. I didn't even never tell her my name. And she went back into the hospital to sit down, and I left. So I never did get a testimony, but I knew the Lord did a work because I could feel the power of God as I was praying for the woman. I knew that he was doing something in her life. Mike, with so many of these miracle stories, they have been beneficial for other people. We get to be the conduit, and I'm talking about we, plural, we, the radio audience, we, Mike and Laura, but also everyone who's hearing of these testimonies, we get to be the conduit for the Lord to use when we yield and submit to Him and allow Him to direct our steps and allow Him to tell us where to go and what to do. Mike, you read that verse, Revelation twelve eleven, and it says they overcame him, and that refers to the accuser of the brethren, if you read the preceding verse. So they overcame the accuser of the brethren, Satan, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. But we overcome the accuser of the brethren, by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen. And Laura, I can say that these testimonies that we have shared, they help build our faith too, because we all go through trials and tribulations. And when you get to feeling a little low and you remember what all the Lord has done for His people and you see those miracles, it just builds your faith. Amen. And Mike, we're out of time, but we have so many stories and testimonies that we could share that we've experienced and that we've been with other people as they've experienced but we don't have time to do that now maybe sometime in the future we'll revisit this again well laura let's close with a prayer lord jesus thank you for your word lord thank you for your miracles that you still work today thank you lord for giving your loving mercy and grace to the people in this world healing them, delivering them, giving them hope in so many ways, Lord. And we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. For anyone listening to this, I pray that you've had experiences like this where the Lord has used you for the benefit of others, or that if you've not, that you pray and ask the Lord to use you in this way. There's no more humbling experience than being able to be used by God for someone else's benefit and all to the honor and glory of Lord Jesus. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Till next week, God bless. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this edition of Where He Leads Me with Mike and Laura Harris. To find out more, go to wherheleadsme.org or email Mike and Laura at where he leads me info at gmail.com.